Have you heard the term bend X-Wing? If you don't know what that is or how you can use it in a Sudoku puzzle, greetings, friends. In this video, I will break down this advanced Sudoku strategy, including all the definitions you need to know. I'll also show you some expert tips and tricks on how to use bend X-Wings to solve hard Sudoku puzzles. And with that, it's solving time. So for my first example, this is the puzzle Double Battered by Jovial. I solved it in a previous video, and I'll put a link to that video below, and of course, to the puzzle itself. I got to this particular position in the puzzle, and I came across a finned X-Wing. So I want to kind of explain what a finned X-Wing is and how you can use it to help solve your Sudoku puzzles. Okay, in order to understand what an Finned X-Wing is, you also have to first understand what an X-Wing is. And I have a tutorial on that. I'll put a link to that at the end of this and go check that out. Very good. But basically, an X-Wing is when you have two of a particular candidate uh, in the same uh, two spaces, so the same two spots in any particular you know rows or columns. And to kind of explain a little bit better, let's use this example here. All right, so we go, let's look at these sevens, right? Okay, if the sevens are in two spots here in row eight, columns one and column seven. Now let's look right here. Now, if the sevens were in also in these two spots, only limited to these two spots in row four, columns one and seven, you'd have an X-wing. And by an X wing, it means that a 7 either has to be here, and then eliminate the 7 there and put a 7 there, that X, or if the 7's not, not there, it has to be here, and you eliminate you know, the 7's here and here, and so this would be a 7. So that's kind of like your nice X wing. All right, so a fin X wing uh, takes it one step further. A fin X wing uh, uses part of that logic to help you get a solve when you don't quite have an X wing. So a fin X wing is three of the corners are the same, right? But then there's one that has an extra candidate. We call that the fin. And I'll put that in purple here. This is the fin. And so what it means is if you didn't have this fin, you'd have an X-wing. So that's kind of the definition. It's, uh, you know, X-wing exists except for it's a fin. But because of this fin, we actually can still do some solving. It's just not as powerful as an X-Wing. Uh, when you're looking at, let's say we look at the X-Wing first, and I'll eliminate the fin. So if this, let's say that 7 was not there, right? And you have your X-Wing, eliminations you can make. You could eliminate, since these are the base sets, rows 4 and 8, you could eliminate every other 7 that's in columns 1 and 7. Those would be the cover set. So you could, if this was an X-Wing, you can eliminate a 7 there, 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 and there. But since this is not an X-Wing, you cannot make all of them. But you can see that's pretty powerful. You know, a, an X-Wing is a pretty powerful case. Fin X-Wing, you're limited to eliminations in the same block that the fin occurs with the X-Wing. So you, the only eliminations you're going to make with a fin X-Wing will be within block 6. So here's how it works. Basically, you look at the fin and go, all right, either this fin is true, so this is a 7, or it's false. If it's not a 7, you have an X-Wing, right? We just showed that. If this is not a 7, this is an X-Wing of 7. Or it's true, and it is a 7. So that's how you, that's how you, find, that's how you uh, use the logic for a fin X-Wing. So what does that mean? In either case, either this is true or not true, any 7 within this block that's in the line, that's in the cover set of the X-Wing, can be eliminated. So what it means is this 7 right here can be eliminated. This could never be a 7. And the reason being is because if it's true, that can't be a 7. If it's not true, you have the X-Wing, and so everything will be eliminated here. Now, since the next wing would only eliminate this area and this only guarantees elimination here in the block, that's why you can only eliminate from either this cell or this cell. Since this cell is filled in, you're not making elimination. You can eliminate a 7 from right there. You cannot make eliminations over here. It doesn't apply. But if you, let's, uh, you know, an easy way to validate is, you know, put a 7 
right right there. So in this block right there, we put a seven. So what happens if you put a seven right there? You'll probably see pretty quickly if this is a seven, that can't be a seven, that can't be a seven, that can't be a seven. Well now you have a problem, right? Because where are you going to put a seven in rows four and eight? Well they actually both have to be in column one now because you just eliminated. So that's the easy way to validate. All right. So hopefully this makes you understand. The other thing I would point out too is that you can actually have more than one fin. So you can have a seven here and here. If this was not a five, but there was a possibility for a seven candidate, um, that that fin works together, and you can make eliminations there. But that's the only, the only eliminations you're making are in the same block of the that that the fin exists in the line of fire of that X wing. Okay. Hopefully I made that pretty clear. Let's move on to our next example. For our next example, this is the puzzle Sparky by Tallcat. And again, there's a link below for that original solve video and uh, the puzzle itself. Uh, I got to this position where I found a pinned X-Wing. So I've only put in a couple candidates, only put in a couple fives, and I've marked where all the ones can be can possibly be in this puzzle. And so maybe you can take a few seconds to see if you can find the pinned X-Wing. All right, congratulations, you spot it. Uh, you're getting pretty good at this concept. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, as I call it, you're looking for, you know, at least one row or column where there's only two possibilities. So right here, there's only two possibilities for one. And you want to see if there's another row column, or in this case, that kind of matches it except for the presence of an additional candidate. So if you look right here in column nine, you can see it has those two ones, but then it has this additional candidate. So that's going to be your fin. This is going to be your fin X-wing. Uh, something I want, I want to kind of make sure it's very clear is that this cannot be your fin. You cannot have the fin right here. The fin has to be in line with the X-wing base set. So what that means is if this wasn't a one, you know, this would be an X-wing. You know, right? It'd be limited to the same two rows, rows three and eight, and columns two and nine, and then you can start making all these eliminations. You eliminate all these cells. So the fin cannot be in the spot where you make the eliminations. The fin basically just kind of messes up a normal X-wing. And so in this case, the base sets are columns two and nine. And so you go, oh, if this wasn't there, then you would have a nice, nice looking X-wing. All right, so I want to make that real clear. You can't you, you can't go over here and put this down because it doesn't that wouldn't make an X-wing because of all these additional ones along row eight and of course row three and same reason why you couldn't make this a fin either because this is not the x-wing isn't going this way with the eliminations it's going up the columns so what elimination can you make right here um, it's going to be this cell so it's going to be again you got the fin if the fin is true, this would not be a one. If the fin is false, you'd have a nice looking X-wing and so you can eliminate all the ones within the same block as the fin. So you can eliminate a one from right there. Something else I want to bring in mind is like, when do you look for a fin X-wing? Well, you would look for it, not at the beginning of the puzzle. You're not gonna go in here because this is a single candidate advanced strategy. You're gonna first go in and look for Naked hidden singles, naked pairs, you know, the normal seven strategies that I have in my very popular medium uh, tutorial, the seven most advanced strategies. You look for those first. After you look for all those, you've done your sign rotation and you're still some stuck. Now you're going to look for advanced strategies. The fin X-Wing will be one that will pop out pretty quick if you're looking at single candidate elimination. So in this case, uh, single candidate eliminations type things are like X chains, swordfish, X wings. Those are usually, usually X-Wings and Swordfish is kind of what I'm looking for next because I wasn't able to uh, to make anything with, with the normal seven strategies. So that's when the fin X-Wing would come into play. Also, empty rectangles use a single candidate strategy, and that's about the time you'd look for empty rectangles as well. You want to kind of weed down as many of the normal, easier strategies to fall, then you'll go to this. And in fact, my next example is going to show you how a fin X-Wing and empty rectangles are related. Okay, for my third and final example uh, for fin X-Wing, this is for my hard Sudoku number seven. It's one of my throwback videos, one of the first ones I did. It had the fin X-Wing. It actually had fin from 
Star Wars, uh, Force Awakens. He's on the cover there. That was a pretty cool looking picture there. So go check it out. I got the link below. In this case, I do find, of course, a thin X wing. So I have all the sixes labeled. That could be the possibilities. And see if you can find the thin X wing while I give you a few seconds. Okay, congratulations. If you spotted it, you're getting really good at these thin X wings. And in fact, there's two of them. There's actually two thin X wings. So if you spotted one of the two, congrats. If you spotted both of them, very impressive. So let's dive into this. Okay, the first one, you want to look here in columns two, one and seven. And then you can see columns one and seven would be an X wing except for this additional carry right there. And so we know that's the fin. These are we make the normal X wing. Either the fin is true, and that can't be a six, but the fin is false, and you have an X wing, and this can't be a six, right? Great. But there's another way to look at this fin X wing. And maybe you saw this one. You could look across the rows. And you see it. This would be an X wing across rows two and eight, if not for this fin. Okay, so we have the fin is either true, and that can't be a six, or the fin is false. You have an X wing here, and that can't be a six. Either way, this can't be a six. Hopefully, you notice you're eliminating the same candidate. So, whichever way you saw that fin X wing, you can still make the same elimination. That can't be a six right here. But wait, there's more. I said I was going to show you the relationship between a fin X wing and an empty rectangle. So I showed you two different fin X wings that eliminate the same candidate six right here, which is nice and it helps you move on with the solve of the puzzle. But you can also, if you're looking for, and I'll put the candidate back, if you were looking for an empty rectangle, you could still solve that same candidate using empty rectangle logic. They're pretty closely related. And so where the empty rectangle comes from is right here. And I'll make this kind of like the empty rectangle shape. So the empty rectangle shape, I call it slice and dice. So the idea is that you could go through a particular block, you'd slice and dice, you know, one cut across the rows, one cut across the column. And if you're eliminating all the candidates, that is a good starting point for an empty rectangle. So if you came across row two, and down column three, you cover all those. And I'll put a link to my empty rectangle tutorial right here. You want to go check that out. Very popular uh, on my channel. In this case, what you do is you come down out of the puzzle and look for a connection with candidates that are that are uh, strongly linked. And strongly linked means there's only two of them available in the row or column. So if you came down out here and you connected here, there's only one of the six available in row eight. That's kind of part of that fin X wing. And so then you do is you come on up and you see where the row comes out of our shape and connects with the other candidate. And wherever those two meet, you can make that elimination. You can eliminate a six from this cell. And the reason being, hopefully you can see it, is that either in block one, a six is along this row and you can eliminate that six. If the six isn't along that row, it's going to be here. If the six is here, this can't be a six. This would have to be a six, and you can still eliminate that six right there. Either way, with the empty rectangle, you're going to eliminate the six. The fin X wing also limits the six. So sometimes it just depends on how you see the strategy, and you're going to make that elimination. But I, many times I've used an empty rectangle where a fin X wing works, and vice versa. So I think it's kind of cool to see two different strategies, same elimination. So I hope you learned something new and cool about fin X-Wings in this tutorial. Check out this other video where I apply fin x wing in a very neat and cool puzzle. You'll love it. Don't forget to buy the coffee link below. Thank you so much for watching.